Now, President Ekofado says his government has, through prudent management, paid up 560 million of the 1.2 billion Ghana City debt inherited uh, at the National Health Insurance Scheme. He was speaking at the start of his tour of the Upper East region. Correspondent Albert Sori has more in the following report. Addressing the debt of cheese at Bolgatanga in the Upper East region, the president said the health insurance scheme, just like many sectors of the economy, was near collapse before his government came to power. However, he intends to deliver on all the promises he made to the people of Ghana during the 2016 electioneering campaign. In the space of eight months, the man I appointed, Kwaku Ajima Menu, brilliant economist and accountant, has been able by virtue of judicious management of the resources and honest management of the resources at his disposal has paid 560 million CDs out of the 1.2 billion dollar debt. And today, today, payments on the National Health Insurance Scheme are current. There are no longer any arrears being built up in the system. That's why the NHIS has begun to work again. And it will continue like that. Thank you, our president. Speaking on behalf of the chiefs, chief of the Bongo traditional area, Naba Baba Salifu Lamiaru, who also doubles as the vice president of the Upper East Regional House of Chiefs, called on the president to revamp the Palugu tomato and the Zwarungu meat factories. He also appealed for good roads. Would like the government to consider revamping the defunct Bolgana meat factory and the Palugu tomato factory? And under this lateral initiative, as a matter of priority, we are appealing to you, Your Excellency, for construction of some key roads in the region. The strategic effect of good roads network in the region cannot not be overemphasized, especially in the area of implementing the socioeconomic development of this region. In response to the chief's call, President Nana Kufado has this to say. I believe these are both matters that are very active under consideration by the outstanding minister whom I've appointed as Minister for Trade and Industry, Alan Chamatein. He was responsible for the establishment of the tomato factory and it's gone down to pieces. He will come and put it together again so that what he started can get new life again. Thank you, my president. My Meanwhile, Minister of Roads and Highways Kwesi Amwakwata has revealed government has started paying road contractors who were owed during the previous government. I'm happy to announce, as I speak to you, I am speaking to the whole country. Within a period of seven, eight months, I can tell you, without any shred of an iota of doubt, that we have crossed the one billion mark. We have paid contractors in this country a little over one billion Ghana cities. <laughs> You're still watching News Desk. Now, um, today, like we said earlier, is Teacher's Day. And as a result, um, there's an event going live, going on live at Kofoidia, the eastern region capital. Let's join them now. As Chancellor of All Nations University, Dasebra has led a visionary leadership foundation to anchor the university as a global center of excellence in its indigenous traditional state with the historic space launch of Ghana's first satellite, Ghana Sat 1, in July 2017. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, 
Professor Notice is currently engaged on completing Volume 3 of Development Unity for publication in 2018, as well as developing a creative and practical solution to the process of empowering women utilizing his cutting edge root based model. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please be up on your feet and with a round of applause, let us welcome this great leader, this great king, as our chairman for this August ceremony. Thank you very much. Please be seated. And that is the commemoration ceremony for the National Teachers' Day um, ongoing currently in the East Image. We'll take you back there um, before the event is over. Now, in Kumase, the Metropolitan Assembly has warned chiefs and other influential persons to desist from intervening for people who breach building regulations. It comes ahead of a planned massive demolition of buildings in waterways in the metropolis. Nani Aljima reports. Some parts of the city have endured floods at the least rain over the years. Over 1,000 people were displaced last week following persistent heavy downpour. The National Disaster Management Organization had difficult moments dealing with such challenges. Amid logistic constraints, the organization reached out to the victims with some relief items. Regional Director Nadmu Nanakwabna Sentry says emphasis will be placed on prevention. We don't have the logistics. We don't have lo logistics because um, uh, Nadmu, we are cash trapped. And uh, to manage disaster, that is why uh, I refer you to America and uh, Puerto Rico. If you can't manage it, so why don't we, I mean, adapt attitude of preventive that done for it to happen? At a town hall meeting, the KMA revealed plans to demolish structures that impede free flow of water. Chief Executive Osayes Berenchi underscored the Assembly's determination to overcome possible threats to its efforts. The ACA, na ACC, we have earmarked some buildings in waterways to be demolished. We will be explaining the issues to the Kumasi Traditional Council so that they can advise whoever comes to them pleading to be spared. We have to do this for the interest of Kumasi. Officials of NADMO are upbeat about the anticipated impact of the interventions. Nana Sentry says the KME must go beyond West to be able to carry out its mandates. For, for that one, those buildings on waterways, right, uh, I'm sure uh, we can demolish because not more, we have, have written several letters to KMA. And not only uh, buildings on waterways alone, but there are so many weak structures. So if the KMA has the gout to do it, not more, we'll back them. Why not? Reporting for Joy News. Nana Yaojima.